Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita as it is. Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada. So in between rounds, I'm reading a little bit from Bhagavad Gita. Another nice picture. Shiva Prabhupada. Krishna. Okay. So this is from the introduction. Ah, uh, phew. <clears throat> Non-sanatana religious faith may have some beginning in the annals of human history. But there's no beginning to the history of sanatana dharma because it remains eternally with the living entities insofar as the living entities are concerned. The authoritative Shastras state that the living entity has neither birth nor death. In the Gita it's stated that the living entity is never born and he never dies. He's eternal, indestructible, and continues to live after the destruction of his temporary material body. In reference to the concept of Sanatana Dharma, we must try to understand the concept of religion from the Sanskrit root meaning of the word. Dharma refers to that which is constantly existing with the particular object. We conclude that there is heat and light along with the fire. Without heat and light, there's no meaning to the word fire. Similarly, we must discover the essential part of the living being, that part which is his constant companion. That constant companion is his eternal quality, and that eternal quality is his eternal religion. When Sanatana Goswami asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about the Swarup of every living being, the Lord replied that the Swarup, or constitutional position of the living beings, is the rendering of service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If we analyze this statement of Lord Chaitanya, we can easily see that every living being is constantly engaged in rendering service to another living being. A living being serves other living beings in two capacities. By doing so, the living entity enjoys life. The lower animals serve human beings as servants serve their master. A serves B, B serves C, C serves D, and so on. Under these circumstances, we can see that one friend serves another friend. The mother serves the son. The wife serves the husband. The husband serves the wife, and so on. If we go on searching in this spirit, it will be seen that there is no exception in the society of living beings to the activity of service. The politician presents his manifesto for the public to convince them of his capacity for service. The voters therefore give the politician their valuable votes, thinking that he will render valuable service to society. The shopkeeper serves the customer. The artisan serves the capitalist. The capitalist serves the family. The family serves the state in the terms of the eternal capacity of the eternal living being. In this way, we can see that no living being is exempt from rendering service to other living beings. And therefore, we can safely conclude that service is the constant companion of the living being and that the rendering of service 
is the eternal religion of the living being. Yet, man professes to belong to a particular type of faith with reference to a particular time and circumstance and thus claims to be a Hindu, a Muslim, a Christian, Buddhist, or any other sect. Such designations are non-sanatana dharma. A Hindu may change his faith to become a Muslim, or a Muslim may change his faith to become a Hindu, or a Christian may change his faith, and so on. But in all circumstances, the change of religious faith does not affect the eternal occupation of rendering service to others. The Hindu, Muslim, or Christian, in all circumstances, is servant of someone. Thus, to profess a particular type of sect is not to profess one's sanatan dharma. The rendering of service is sanatan dharma. Factually, we're related to the Supreme Lord in service. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme Enjoyer, and we living entities are his servitors. We're created for his enjoyment, and if we participate in that eternal enjoyment with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we become happy. We cannot become happy otherwise. It is not possible to be happy independently, just as no one part of the body can be happy without cooperating with the stomach. It's not possible for the living entity to be happy without rendering transcendental loving service unto the Supreme Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, worship of different demigods or rendering service to them is not approved. It is stated in the 7th chapter, 20th verse. Tamais tais tai rita kyana prapajyante nadevata tam tam imam astaya prakricha nita svaya. Translation Those whose minds are distorted by material desires, surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. Bhagavad Gita 7.20 Here it is plainly said that those who are directed by lust worship the demigods and not the Supreme Lord Krishna. When we mention the name Krishna, we do not refer to any sectarian name. Krishna means highest pleasure. And it is confirmed that the Supreme Lord is the reservoir or storehouse of all pleasure. We are all hankering after pleasure. Ananda maya vyasa. The living entities like the Lord are full of consciousness and they are after happiness. The Lord is perpetually happy. And if the living entities associate with the Lord, cooperate with him, take part in his association, then they also become happy. Happy, happy. Krishna. I still have a few more rounds to chant. Hare Krishna.